I hear y'all. Love y'all. Solidarity. I want to bring out my next visitor from Seattle. Seattle. Seattle's in the building, y'all. Kashama Sarwant, who not only was demonized herself, but she beat Amazon herself. She gonna talk about it. Brothers, sisters, siblings, brother Chris, brother Derek, sister Sarah, Nelson, it is such an honor to be here with you as the Socialist City Council member from Seattle. And to bring you greetings from the working people, union members, and socialists in Seattle who became the first city to win attacks on Amazon in the nation. You know, Amazon's brutal working conditions made it ripe for the union struggle that is going on. But there was nothing automatic about ALU's victory at JFK. It is important, imperative, that those of us who want to build the union in Amazon and build, rebuild the proud traditions of the American militant labor movement that we learn the lessons from JFK 8. Lesson number one, lead relentlessly with concrete and clear demands to win over your fellow workers. Carry out unstoppable shop floor organizing with workers talking to workers. And last but not least, name the enemy. Be very clear, the bosses, the billionaires, the executives, the major shareholders, they are not on our side. They are not busting the union because they don't know how to make profits. They are busting the union because they know that when workers get organized, it is bad for billionaire profits. This method that has been used by ALU at JFK 8, I would call it class struggle strategy. And it stands in stark contrast to much of what has prevailed in the labor movement for the last 40 years, which I would call business unionism. The false idea that somehow you can win over the bosses through moral arguments, but not by mobilizing the membership, taking strike action, doing work stoppages, in short, doing everything that JFK 8 did. And that is, the, that is the lesson we need to draw, that the power in the bargaining room comes from worker power in the workplaces and on the streets. I am very happy to hear that Senator Bernie Sanders and Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez met with the workers this morning. I would urge them, I would urge every self-described pro-union elected official in Congress to immediately act, act to bring bills to, ma to make sure that labor law is enforced when these corporations get giant subsidies. Put, put forward a legislation right now in Congress to tax corporations like Starbucks and Amazon. And, and we have a message for labor leadership throughout the nation as well. We need a labor leadership that is not in bed with union-busting establishment politicians. In fact, in fact, we need a new political party for working people, but we need, but in addition to that, we need a revival in the labor movement itself. It is very, very important that the ALU has in their constitution that executive board members will take home a salary no more than the average wage of their membership. This is the absolute minimal first step for accountability. And it is almost non-existent in the labor union. I, as an elected representative of working people, 
as a rank and file member of the teachers union, as a city council member, I get paid $146,000 a year. I take home only $40,000, and the rest after taxes goes into a solidarity fund for labor and social struggle. And out of that solidarity fund, I am so deeply proud and honored to be able to donate $20,000 to the ALU struggle. Let's make sure that LDJ5 is a victory because we know that if they smell a little bit of an opening, these bosses, they will try to seize momentum from us. So it is our collective responsibility on all our shoulders to make sure that we support the workers at LDJ5, we support the Amazon Labor Union to make sure that this is a huge victory in this election and a crushing defeat for Amazon and Jeff Bezos. Yeah. 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 Y'all heard that, $20,000 going to the ALU, y'all. Thank you, Kasama. Thank you.